सो वेलकम टू द समरी वीडियो ऑफ इंडियन अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड 116 लीजेस बिफोर मूविंग अहेड आई वुड रिक्वेस्ट यू टू प्लीज सब्सक्राइब टू द चैनल मोर ओवर वी विल बी शेयरिंग सम समरी वीडियोस ऑफ वेरियस इंडियन अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड्स दे विल बी इन सिंपल इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज वी हैव ऑलरेडी शेयर्ड इंडियन अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड हंड्रेड एंड I am sharing the link of the same in description as well. Hundred and sixteen. If we talk about leases, this standard is a bit practical, uh, more of practical oriented rather than theory. So in this summary video, we will try to understand certain concepts. But while solving the practical questions, there is a different video that has already been added. But the video is in Hindi. Uh, we have solved the questions over there related to various concepts of Indian Accounting Standard 116. I will also be sharing the same, the link of the same in the description. Uh, you may later on check for the same, and do subscribe for the channel for uh, in future getting further such summary videos. You will be getting the notifications. Okay, so starting with the same, what exactly is lease? Lease means it should have a contract. Contract should be for an asset. lease cannot be for a service okay it should be for a specified period it cannot be indefinite and it should be for a consideration it cannot be free so lease definition by definition if we say it always has four things contract asset time period specified and consideration what is lease term there are only two important definitions when we talk about lease the term period for which the contract is done and the period is non cancellable uh suppose we take an asset on lease for 10 years and you can further extend it by 2 years you have an option to extend it by further 2 years we also take into consideration those additional 2 years if we are expecting to extend it if we are expecting to extend it okay if we are not expecting to extend it then we only consider 10 years if there is a termination clause and we are expecting to terminate it let's say we can early terminate it 4 years before 10 year contract we can terminate it 4 years before and we are planning to terminate it so we should consider lease term as 6 years and not 10 years okay so i hope both the points a and b they are clear to you you may read the uh, read on all these uh, summaries that i have given even i'll be sharing the summary note link in the description itself okay now exception to this standard where the standard is not applicable when we talk about uh, minerals natural gas oil rege regenerative resources then we have these biological assets lease of biological asset related to agriculture they are covered in india s 41 then we have service concession arrangement license of intellectual properties they are both covered in indian accounting standard 115 revenue recognition so they are not covered over here in lease okay then we have licensing arrangement that are covered within the scope of intangible assets in the standard of intangible assets so we don't cover them over here like motion pictures video recording plays patents copyrights etc okay i hope you are able to understand now this standard will later on tell you that you need to recognize an asset we will call it right to use asset and you need to recognize liability we will call it lease liability in two cases you don't need to recognize any asset or liability what are the two cases these are known as optional exemptions not compulsory it is optional to you and we are talking about lessee lessee is the one who has these options for lesser accounting treatment is altogether different so summary is split in two part first part will be for lessee second will be for lesser okay what is the optional exemption when the lease term is 12 months or less so if the lease term is 12 month or less we don't need to apply the concepts given in this standard you may straight away expense of the rent as and when paid okay because the time period is very less second low value assets like it can be telephone laptop computer office furniture the basic uh, assets if they are taken on lease we consider them as low value assets and that is why their leases are not required to be recognized as per this standard okay what happens when we do uh, uh, account as per this standard as per the standard first step you need to determine lease liability what is lease liability lease liability means your ob present value present value of all obligations what are the obligations the amount that you are supposed to pay in future 
present value of all obligations that you are supposed to pay in the coming days. They are lease rent over the lease term. So present value of lease rent over the lease term makes lease liability. We ignore any amount in lease liability that has been immediately paid. So if it is advanced rent and I have paid the first installment, we ignore that. It is not part of lease liability. So what all is covered? Fixed payment. We don't consider variable payments, but sometimes we consider variable payment if variable payment is something that is dependent on index in a general inflation index is what it means to say okay or some rate either the variable rate is defined that it will increase by 10 percent every year fixed they have defined it that we will increase it by 10 percent every year so if the rate is fixed then we consider variable payment okay or if it is dependent on general inflation index then we consider the rate else we don't consider the rate okay if at the end you have guaranteed any residual value, sometimes what happens is lessee assures a residual value that at the end of lease term, I will assure you a minimum payment for the wear and tear faced by the asset. Okay. So we have to also consider that exercise price of a reasonable certain purchase option. So if you also have a purchase option, it is not residual value guarantee. They are two different things. Residual value guarantee means the wear and tear faced by the asset being in lease period. That is what you have guaranteed and purchase option is at the end lessee may purchase the asset. So that is what it is talking about and lease termination penalty. Lease termination means if you want to terminate it. So there may be a penalty clause and if you are planning to terminate it, then you should consider the penalty clause. If you are not planning to terminate it, don't consider the penalty clause. So present value of all these payments. We don't consider the payments already been made as part of lease liability. Remember what I have said right now, because this thing that we have already paid will be the part of your debit side. So what will be the present value of all this? Where will we write in the journal entry? We will show it in lease liability as the name suggests it will have a credit entry. So this is a credit entry. What will be debit? Debit entry will be known as right to use asset. Remember, we are talking from lessee point of view, not lesser, the one who has taken the asset on lease, not the one who has given the asset on lease. Okay. So right to use asset on commencement date of the lease, commencement date, the date on which the lease rent has begun, the lease period has commenced is the known as the lease commencement date. On that date, we debit by lease liability, not just lease liability. If any other payment that has been made, which was not part of lease liability, any pay payment made before commencement, uh, it could be transaction cost, it could be advance rent. So all that is also considered as part of right to use asset and any decommissioning or restoration cost as we have read in Indian accounting standard 16 property plant and equipment. Okay, so this is initial recognition. The entry passed is right to use asset debit to lease liability to cash, cash is for B and C to decommissioning liability, which is for D. So this is how journal entry is passed. Okay, <clears throat> for this subsequent recognition is same as in day 16 or 38 or 40. So if it is a PPE, we will account it as per 16. If it is uh, intangible asset, we will account it as per India's 38. And if it is investment property, subsequent recognition will be as per India's 40. This standard will not cover subsequent recognition of right to use asset. Okay. Now, subsequent measurement of lease liability, what do we do? You need to solve certain questions for the same. I have shared the practical questions link in the description so that you are able to see how they are solved. The lease liability initially recognized what we do, we add interest to it. Okay. We add interest to it. Interest is added at the rate at which the present value was determined for lease liability. It was borrowing rate, borrowing rate of lessee, borrowing rate of lessee. Okay. We reduce any lease payment that is made. Lease payment made is not transferred to PL. We reduce it from the asset itself. Okay. And remeasure any modification <coughs> if any made. 
लीज मॉडिफिकेशन कंसेप्ट इज समथिंग दैट आई विल नॉट बी एबल टू कवर इन समरी इट इज अ बिट ट्रिकी कंसेप्ट ओके आई विल ट्राई टू इन फ्यूचर कम अप विथ अ वीडियो रिलेटेड टू लीज मॉडिफिकेशन इफ देर इज एनी अदर रिविजन रीअसेसमेंट वॉट कैन बी द रीअसेसमेंट लीज टर्म मे हैव रिड्यूस्ड बिकॉज यू मे थिंक ऑफ कैंसिलिंग द लीज अर्लियर और लीज पीरियड मे हैव एक्सटेंडेड यू मे थिंक ऑफ एक्सटेंड यूजिंग द एक्सटेंशन ऑप्शन so they are known as reassessment so we also use reassessment sometimes if needed okay now variable rent is not considered as part of lease liability so how is variable rent accounted suppose you have given a place on lease which covers 10% of whatever revenue that will be collected from that place 10% of whatever revenue that is collected from that place this is variable rent so when that amount will be collected 10% of uh, revenue so whenever the revenue will occur whenever revenue will be earned 10% of that will be considered as part of lease income so when will it be accounted when revenue will be earned so variable rent is not covered in initial recognition it is recognized in the period in which triggers the payment will occur and finally the payment the event because of with the variable rent is being received triggers occurs and because of with the payment will be received i hope it is clear lease modification i told you i'll not be able to cover much in detail but generally we consider lease modification as a separate contract and not part of existing contract we don't consider it part of existing contract if there is increase in scope we had taken 10000 square feet area for rent now we are increasing it by further 5000 square feet increase in scope and the consideration for that additional area consideration for additional area is equivalent to its stand alone price equivalent to stand alone price i hope it is clear so a and b together makes lease modification i hope you are able to understand what i am trying to say okay so there is an increase in the area and also that increase the consideration for increase area is equivalent to stand alone price of that so if either of the condition doesn't exist we don't consider lease modification as separate lease we consider it as part of existing lease there was some revision in lease uh, modification recently because of covid amendment rather i should say uh there is a video for the same that has been added separately you may watch the video but that one is in hindi okay so remember that one will be in hindi sale and lease back we have solved proper questions related to sale and lease back uh as i told you practical questions there is a separate video we have already added it in the description okay if it qualifies that the sale that was made is actual sale as per india's 115 revenue recognition and it can be considered as transfer of asset then what do we do we derecognize the asset we recognize right to use asset equivalent to equivalent to the lease term for which we have leased back the asset we have leased back the asset now it will be proportionate to proportionate to previous carrying amount of the asset and not present value of rent payable not present value of rent payable previous carrying amount of the asset that is retained okay <clears throat> what you have to pay for lease is your lease liability and we only recognize gain related to that part of the asset that is sold part of the asset that is sold uh, it will be hard to explain theoretically this concept you will have to watch the video related to the same okay <clears throat> so if sale and lease back is not sale like i am selling you an asset a sells the asset to b and lease back the same and the sale doesn't qualify as transfer if sale doesn't qualify as transfer that means asset belongs to a himself right sale doesn't qualify as transfer asset belongs to a himself then in such a case amount received by a from b for sale is considered as loan and amount being paid as lease rent is considered as repayment of loan okay so what do we recognize we recognize financial liability it is accounted as per india's 109 both for lessee and lessor both for lessee and lessor now we'll start lessor's accounting lessee i have told you only one method lessor there are two methods finance lease operating lease 
ऑपरेटिंग लीज इज बेसिक लीज वॉट एवर रेंट यू आर रिसीविंग विल बी शोन एज एन इनकम फाइनेंस लीज इज स्पेशल टाइप ऑफ लीज स्पेशल टाइप ऑफ लीज a lease that transfers substantially all risk and rewards related to the asset whatever risk related to the asset whatever reward related to the asset is transferred is known as finance lease and operating lease is anything that is not finance lease so how what is finance lease we have uh, i have written down five basic ones that are important uh, from exam point of view i can say the one in which at the end lease trans uh, ownership of the asset transfers to lessee with this means it is finance lease second lessee has a purchase option and purchase option is at less than fair market value less than fair market value of the asset finance lease obviously because he will exercise it the lease term covers major economic life of the asset what do i mean by major generally 90% or more there is no figure there is nowhere written 90% or more it is just in general parlance we talk about that the present value of lease payment is equal to assets fair value present value of lease payment is equal to assets fair value okay the underlying asset is of specialized nature so if we determine the present value of all lease payment to be made is equal to today's fair value of the asset it is finance lease asset is specifically made for you now it doesn't matter any of the point it is always finance lease so all these cases we consider it as a finance lease otherwise it is operating lease if it is finance lease accounting is same accounting is same <clears throat> as lease liability but now the entry will be in reverse order lease liability rather we will write lease receivable two you were writing right to use asset there but he is the one lesser is the one who is owner of the asset he will de recognize the asset because in all these points you can understand that ownership is finally transferring to lessee other than he almost in all the cases ownership or maybe the assets main uh, benefits will be entertained enjoyed by lessee so that is why lesser will de recognize the asset and what we will recognize is present value of what is receivable to him present value of whatever end that will be received by him okay so lesser retains lease or in case of operating lease lesser retains the asset asset continues to be accounted in his books operating lease and whatever lease rent received is recognized as income over the lease term while in finance lease we de recognize the asset we recognize lease receivables and the difference between the two is transferred to pl now what do we do subsequently finance income is recognized at the rate at which we had discounted earlier the lease rent receivable lease rent receivable and recognized as income at constant rate over the period so you may go through the questions questions would be better if it is a sale and lease back transaction and it transfer qualifies as sale that means a has sold the asset to b and leased back so we are talking about b now b is the lesser right so qualifies as sale b will recognize the asset in his books recognize the asset and he will continue to account for whatever rent he is getting as per india's 116 either as finance lease or operating lease depending on the situation okay now a sale and lease back from lessee point of view we have solved a practical question lesser it will be uh, let's ignore it will be exact reverse of what we have done over there Uh, i should not say reverse because there there is a right to use asset recognized by lessee so in this case even b and a both of them will recognize the asset so that is where the difference lies okay transfer is not a sale if not a sale then what i had told you it will be considered as loan so b will account as loan given to a and account it as loans and advances as per financial instruments indian accounting standard 109 okay i hope uh, <clears throat> these videos have been beneficial to you okay that's it the summary video has been beneficial to you thank you for watching the same and all the best for your exams to subscribe the channel for future uh, videos summary videos notification as well thank you